Well, at the end of the 67 war, Israel was uh, on the borders of the Jordan River and the Suez Canal, occupying uh, the West Bank, Gaza, the Golan Heights in Syria, and uh, the Sinai Peninsula all the way to the Suez Canal. The fact that it was on, on the borders of the Suez Canal meant that the Suez Canal was effectively closed. But the, the Israel now was in a position to control one of the most important uh, waterways that connected Europe uh, with the East. Uh, and so therefore, Israel was suddenly in a, in a situation where it had a much broader influence than uh, before the war uh, in terms of the geostrategic situation there. Uh, and with the Russians coming in to support the Egyptians uh, after that war, um, Israel was up against Russia, and that meant that it became a player in the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. Uh, on the uh, Jordan side, Israel in occupation of the West Bank, uh, for the first time actually came into direct contact with the Palestinians. And, but it was as occupier and governor over the Palestinian people. And uh, that generated a whole uh, new uh, dynamic uh, between Israel and the Arab world and Israel and the Palestinians in particular, which has continued now for five decades uh, in which the whole question of how to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian conflict uh, remains uh, a challenge for all of the players in the region. Well, the beauty of 242 at the time was its ambiguity. It provided for a negotiation, direct negotiation between Israel and its Arab neighbors for the first time. Uh, said that it was unacceptable uh, for territory to be acquired by force, but on the other hand called for Israel to withdraw from territories occupied rather than the territory, and provided that Israel should have both recognition and secure uh, and recognize borders. So it left room for uh, the negotiation of Israel's borders, uh, implying that they could be different from uh, the 67 lines, which uh, were seen, at least by Israel, as indefensible. Uh, but that ambiguity became, became a problem uh, for the diplomats, because the Arabs insisted that the resolution required withdrawal to the 67 lines, which it could be interpreted as meaning, and Israel insisted that it did not. And so in the end, that caused a huge diplomatic wrangle that went on for years. But in each case of where Israel uh, reached peace agreements, first with Egypt and then with Jordan, and indeed negotiated uh, a peace agreement with Syria that was never concluded. In each case, the 67 lines were the lines that, that uh, Israel returned to in the case of Egypt and Jordan and was ready to return to in the case of Syria with some very minor uh, border rectifications. The whole question, though, of uh, what would be done with the Palestinians was really not addressed in 242. Uh, they were treated as a, as a refugee issue. There was no uh, reference to any national rights for the Palestinians. And therefore, the question of where the border would be drawn uh, between Israel and the West Bank and what entity would emerge in the West Bank, um, that is, eventually the consensus was uh, for a Palestinian state there. Uh, but that, that took a long time to evolve and was not envisaged in uh, UN Security Council Resolution 242. And therefore, uh, there's a real challenge in uh, the negotiations now because there's essentially a, an agreed terms of reference, 242, that doesn't address the problems uh, that have to be resolved for a final agreement between Israel and the Palestinians.